The term royal prerogative in British political terminology is a body of customary authority, privilege and immunity recognized in common law and sometimes in civil law jurisdictions possessing a monarchy as belonging to the sovereign alone. It is claimed that in the British establishment, which is known as a liberal democracy based on a constitutional monarchy, the royal prerogative serves as a prescribed ceremonial function of the state power. In former times, all power would have been exercised by the king or queen, him or herself, and then some of that power would have been shifted to courtiers until that power was shifted to ministers. But even now, it is still the case that there are huge amounts of the British Constitution that are governed, not by Act of Parliament, not by the House of Commons, not by anything which touches upon the people or the people's elected representatives, but which is governed exclusively by the royal prerogative and can only be exercised by the Queen herself. The, the Constitutional Convention is that the Queen will act only and always on ministerial or prime ministerial advice. but were the Queen not to act on advice, and there have been plenty of instances in the 20th century when that was when that was the situation, no one can seek judicial review of any of this. There's no parliamentary investigation of any of it. So these are these are powers which are held in check by nothing more than habits and customs and goodwill. And, and constitutionally, that's not good enough. Only the Queen can appoint the Prime Minister. Only the Queen can dismiss government ministers or dismiss all the government. Only the Queen can give the royal assent, which is necessary for any bill which has been passed by the House of Commons and the House of Lords to come into legal forces in active Parliament. Only the Queen can dissolve Parliament, which is the constitutional device that triggers the general election. The people cannot do that. The House of Commons cannot do that. The Speaker of the House of Commons cannot do that. Only the Queen can exercise these powers. But most prerogative powers are now not exercised by um, the Queen herself, but by the Prime Minister and by other ministers in, in the government. The problem here is that these prerogative powers are ill-defined. Um, it's difficult to get them judicially reviewed, to get that exercise judicially reviewed, and it's difficult to get Parliament to scrutinize the way in which these powers are exercised. Why? Because they are covered and shrouded and protected in the, in the mystique of the Crown. But, you know, they, the ministers will come to Parliament and say, this is an exercise of the royal prerogative, as if it's got something to do with some you know, notion of top-down um, government, rather than government in the people's name and in the public interest. And, and there are examples from when Mrs. Thatcher was Prime Minister, when John Major was Prime Minister, and when Tony Blair was Prime Minister, which I think speak quite clearly to this. The Thatcher example is, is the... Um, the decision she took in 1984 to ban trade unions from GCHQ, which is part of the Secret Service, part of the Security Service, um, they, um, uh, controlling the terms and conditions of employment in the civil service is a prerogative. It's a prerogative power. There's no statute that governs it. It's a prerogative power. And she just unilaterally said one day, if you're a civil servant and you work for GCHQ, you can't be in or join a trade union or form a trade union. That was actually the first decision that the Labour government overturned in 1987 when it was mm. uh, when it came into power and Robin Cook made that decision on the first day of so again of, with uh, the prerogative. yeah again under yeah. the prerogative just reversing it um, uh, and you know this was a you know, pretty controversial decision it was judicially reviewed it went all the way to the highest court in the country which is the House of Lords mm. uh, and the House of Lords unanimously held that it couldn't be judicially reviewed because she was acting under the prerogative rather than acting under a statutory power um, in, when John Major was Prime Minister, the big scandal was over the Scott Inquiry and arms to Iraq and the way in which the government had used the prerogative to keep sensitive information out of uh, criminal courts. Um, the co prosecutions collapsed because government ministers um, changed their evidence on the stand. Um, this was the late Alan Clark MP. Um, but if um, the government had had its way, then uh, executives of, company, of, of, of export companies such as Matrix Churchill would have been sentenced to up to seven years imprisonment for trading with Saddam Hussein's Iraq. The reason why they were trading with Saddam Hussein's Iraq was because we didn't like Iraq much, we didn't like Iran even more, uh, and we were trying to prop up the, uh, the regime in Iraq uh, through the offices of MI5 and MI6. And these guys who aren't in the dock were um, 
uh, helping MI5 and MI6. And all of this is governed by prerogative, and the government said, well, you can't have that, you're not going to allow this information to be released into open court using a prerogative power called public interest immunity. It used to be called crown privilege, which is actually a better name for it, crown privilege. Um, and uh, um, that led to a three and a half year major judicial inquiry, the Scott Inquiry, reported in 1996, which again it, it, it was, I think, one of the contributory factors that led to the demise of the major government in the 1997 general election. And the famous example, the probably most important example of all of these, really, the most shocking um, and outrageous example of all of these, is, was Blair's decision as Prime Minister in 2003 to go into. Uh, what was certainly an illegal war in Iraq on what was certainly a false prospectus. The Prime Minister has the power to wage war. Why does the Prime Minister have the power to wage war? Because it is a royal prerogative power. There is no act of Parliament. Uh, we, the British people and its elected representatives in Parliament have never conferred this power on the government. It's a royal prerogative power that comes directly from the Crown. Now, clearly it's the case that the government needs to have this power. Right? Mm. But clearly, equally, it's the case that we the people, and through our elected representatives in Parliament and in the House of Commons, need to determine clearly in statute what the limits of that power are, rather than the Prime Minister just waving a sort of prerogative in the air, as if it's some sort of magic wand that says, I can, I can determine the conditions in which we fight war, where we fight war, when we fight war, how many troops. And none of this is subject to any parliamentary scrutiny at all. It's, all of this takes place completely out with the democratic framework of the British Constitution because the Prime Minister has in his pocket something called the royal prerogative that he can just use.